with us now Dr. Alia Kodli, Professor in Pediatric Cardiology, Children's Hospital, Ain Shams University. Hello, Dr. Really Hello. Nice to meet you. Today. Nice to meet you. Uh, what's your first impression about Cardio Alex this year? Well, as usual, Cardio Alex is impressive because uh, they ha are always creative. They add something new each year, and one of their additions is what you're doing now. <laughs> and they have. Uh, different topics, new topics each time. They are versatile and they have a lot of um, uh, uh, foreign speakers, international speakers with new ideas. It's really time for brainstorming and learning, as usual. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, what are you going to present this year? I'm going to be talking about what's new in rheumatic fever. Everybody thinks that rheumatic fever is a disease of the past but it is still present all over the world. And uh, this year, in, in May, 30, 25th of May, 2018, the World Health Organization in the, and the World Heart Federation in Geneva has declared that this year will be a year to solve the rheumatic fever and rheumatic heart disease all over the world. This has never been has never occurred before that the whole world and the World Heart Federation is standing strong against rheumatic fever and they want to urge countries to, to work and fight and governments to find rheumatic fever because rheumatic fever is usually present in underprivileged areas mm -hmm. and not always the government are interested to, 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 uh, to treat the poor people, they are in, interested as money goes to the rich ones. Mm -hmm. So they are urging countries of the whole world to cover rheumatic fever, that's one thing. The other thing, we're talking about the American Heart Association guidelines. They have written new guidelines for diagnosis of rheumatic fever, and they consider Egypt as one of the moderate and high-risk populations. And they have written, they have added to consider monoarthritis and arthralgia as major manifestations of rheumatic fever. Now in Egypt, this will lead to a large degree of overdiagnosis and that is why we cannot do that we have to stick to our own criteria and have the egyptian criteria and that is why we have started a national uh, program and a, a national committee for rheumatic fever it has been declared this year 2018 by the minister of health there is a committee from all over egypt those who are interested in rheumatic fever and we are running a campaign all over Egypt to cover to see where is rheumatic fever. We're, we've been training doctors in 30 centers for the, for the diagnosis of rheumatic fever and uh, echo diagnosis of rheumatic fever. What's also new about it, they are talking about the new organisms to treat rheumatic fever. Another, to another topic also is uh, vaccines. They are in the background. Everybody is looking forward for a vaccine for rheumatic fever and they're working hard. There's a vaccine that's being tried in the United States and in, uh, in, in uh, England. But I think people have to understand that rheumatic fever in these areas is not like other areas. So they have to do another vaccines for an area like us. For, for instance, people who live in uh, Australia they are not of the same background. There are those who are the, uh, the natives of Australia, they are called the, the aboriginals. They are black and they have a lot of rheumatic fever. And their rheumatic fever is different than what we are having in Egypt. So each country has got its own organisms and the own, their own precipitating factors and the, uh, their own streptococci that lead to rheumatic fever. And that is why vaccines will not be the same. They're going to be different. Nice to meet you today, Doctor. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you. you.